Good morning and welcome to Church of the Redeemer this morning. We are a just peace and open and affirming congregation. No matter where you are on life's journey, you matter and you are welcome here. I invite you, if you see visitors on our Zoom, to offer them a warm Church of the Redeemer welcome. Everybody's name is, should be up on the screen. I try to keep up in um, updating people's names. So please take this up, take an opportunity as people are logging off to offer them a greeting. I invite you to join me on Wednesday at 1 p.m. via Zoom for Bible study. You can contact me for that link. In addition to worshiping here on Zoom, we had a 9 a.m. worship on the lawn this morning. It was a little chilly, but um, we had about 17 people worshiping with us there. And a video of this Zoom recording will be up on both our Facebook page and our YouTube channel sometime tomorrow afternoon. Thank you for your contributions to the Westlake Food Pantry and thank you to Karen Farmer who dropped off those donations this week. She was greeted in the lobby with a thank you for our congregation and our generosity. You should have received an email this week um, and or a note in the mail about our October 3rd blessing of the animals. You are invited to bring your four-legged friends or amphibians um, to receive a blessing. It will be at 10 a.m. on October 3rd. All animals must be on leashes or in cages and I look forward to meeting your animals or getting reacquainted with them. On October 4th, we will celebrate World Communion Sunday. Since we will be celebrating it differently this year, I am inviting people to bake or to go to a bakery and purchase a bread that might be used in a different country. During communion, you will have the opportunity to show that bread and to name what country your bread represents. I hope you will consider participating in this unique way of celebrating World Communion Sunday. The church is continuing to function even if the building is closed. Thank you to everyone who continues to practice supporting the church with your monetary gifts. I know it is easy to forget to honor God in this way when we are not sitting in the pews, but it still remains important to the life of the church. You may continue to mail your gifts or you may donate online via our website. Thank you for being with us today as we continue to participate in worship using technology. We know that no matter where we are, God is with us. This morning, we are going to consider grace and mercy and whether we want it for everyone or just for ourselves. Think of a time when it was more important that something was fair rather than just. Let us be in an attitude of worship as we listen to the prelude.
I invite you to join in our call to worship. Open your hearts to God's loving mercy. Lord, come into our hearts this day. Having received God's mercy, bring that love to others. Lord, be with us as we reach out to others in compassion. Feel your spirits filled with the goodness of God. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings which you pour into our lives. I invite you to join us in the singing of hymn number 23, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. Join with me in our prayer of invocation. Lord, who lifts us up, resides in our hearts today. Help us to listen closely for your word to us. Remind us that you are always with us throughout all of our lives. Give us confidence in your presence so that we may go into your world ready to witness to your love through our works and our deeds. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. It's not fair, is what many of us from time to time. We watch what everyone around us is doing and getting, and we want to get our fair share of the french fries, the chocolate cake, the privileges, or whatever reward is being offered. So we can totally understand the complaint of the first hired workers in the Bible story today. Jesus tells us of a landowner who hires a group of workers and they come to an agreement as to their pay. And then halfway through the day, he hires some more. And at the end of the day, with just an hour left, he hires still more workers. And then he pays all of them the same wages. Some of us have a passion for rules. We like there to be rules, so we know what to expect. But then we want the rules followed. But the landowner did follow the rules. He paid those who worked all day what they'd agreed to. He did not mistreat the first hired. Instead, he was just generous to the last hired. And sometimes it's better to be loving than to be fair giving little kids extra strikes or letting them stand closer to the pitcher in family ball games is not fair to the older players, but it is loving. Doing a sibling's chores while he's sick is not fair, but it is loving. Giving up what you want to do on a Saturday afternoon to take care of a younger sibling is not fair, but it is loving. And paying the workers who only worked one hour the same amount you paid the workers who worked all day is not fair, but it is loving. We're going to be talking a lot about God's love this year since our theme is rooted in God's love. 
And it might be good to remember that God's love is not like a pie that leaves less for me every time God gives someone else a slice. It's more like a fire that gets warmer for everyone with every log that's added. Let's pray. God, we are glad that you love us in ways that are beyond fair, more than we deserve and with greater generosity than we could ever have bargained for. May we try to love others in the same ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from Jonah, chapter 3, verses 10 through chapter 4, verse 11. God saw their efforts to renounce their evil behavior, and God relented by not inflicting on them the disaster that threatened them. But Jonah grew indignant and fell into a rage. He prayed to Yahweh and said, Please, Yahweh, 
isn't this exactly what I said would happen when I was still in my own country? That's why I left and fled to Tarshish. I knew that you were a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in kindness, relenting from violence. Now, Yahweh, please take my life. I'd rather be dead than keep on living. Then Yahweh said, what gives you the right to be angry? Jonah then left the city and sat down to the east of it. There he made a shelter for himself and sat down under the shades to see what would happen to the city. Then Yahweh God sent a castor oil plant to grow up over Jonah to shade his head and soothe his indignation. Jonah was delighted with the castor oil plant. But at dawn the next day, God sent a worm to attack the castor oil plant and it withered. And after the sun had risen, God set a scorching east wind the sun beat down on Jonah's head so that he was overcome and begging for death and said, I'd rather be dead than keep on living. And God said to Jonah, what gives you the right to be upset about the castor plant? He replied, I have every right to be angry to the point of death. And God replied, you feel sorrow because of a castor plant that cost you no labor, that you did not make grow, that sprouted in the night and that perished in the night. Is it not right then for me to feel sorrow for the great city of Nineveh in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from the left to say nothing of the animals? And our second reading comes from Psalm 145 verses one through eight. I will extol you, my God and ruler, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is God and greatly to be praised. God's greatness is unsearchable. One generation, generation shall loud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and astounding in steadfast love. Our God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this morning is from the 20th chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 16. I am reading from the New Revised Standard Version. And Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard came to said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, they thought they would re when uh, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, 
friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, we come giving thanks for your grace and mercy. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts lead us to not only receive your grace and mercy, but also to offer it to others. And may it all be acceptable in your sight, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. If you have more than one child, you have likely heard the phrase, that's not fair in relation to something one child was getting over another. Shoot, if you have one child, you have probably heard, it's not fair. Probably all of us have uttered this phrase as a child. There was a study done with monkeys and there were two monkeys in a cage, in cages next to each other. The trainer was trying to teach them how for the monkey to give them um, a stone. So initially, when the monkey would give them a stone, they would receive a piece of cucumber. Now for, for monkeys, cucumbers are a treat. Then the next time, they, the first monkey gave the trainer a stone and received a cucumber. And the second monkey gave the trainer a stone and received a grape. Now a grape is like caviar for monkeys. The first monkey, the one receiving only cucumber, presented the, the rock expectantly to the trainer, expecting a grape. But he received a cucumber and he became incensed. The second monkey kept receiving grapes and the first monkey became increasingly angry, eventually throwing the piece of cucumber back at the trainer. I have to imagine that if the monkey had had language, that first monkey would have undoubtedly yelled, that's not fair. We may think we want fairness, but in both the story in Jonah and the story in Matthew, it is way more about grace and mercy than fairness. And if we're honest, sometimes we want fairness when it comes to us, but we want justice when it comes to others. Both of these stories, both in Jonah and in Matthew, seem to focus on God's grace and mercy. Let me give you a little refresher on the book of Jonah, all four chapters of it. Remember that Jonah never wanted to go to Nineveh. God comes to Jonah and says, you need to go and I am going to save the people of Nineveh. And Jonah says, I am not going there. They are not going to listen to God. And God, you are going to be way too merciful with them. And you're going to keep trying. I am not going. And God says, oh, yes, you are. So Jonah gets in the boat and partway there says, I am out of here. I'm going to swim to Tarshish. But he jumps out of the boat. And Jonah, supposedly, gets swallowed by a whale and ends up getting spit up on the shores of Nineveh after riding in the belly of that whale. So the part that we read this morning is the part in which Jonah is angry at God for God offering mercy to the people of Nineveh. Now, God, 
offers grace to Jonah too. And Jonah says, oh, well, that's fine. You can offer me grace, just not to those people of Nineveh. Jonah wants grace and mercy for himself, but he wants justice for the people of Nineveh. In our Matthew text, <clears throat> it begins with, the kingdom of heaven is like, and then it tells the story of the landowner of the vineyard. When we were in Bible study this week, we discussed whether the landowner was God or maybe was just representing God. Maybe, maybe not. But the real bigger picture here is what is the kingdom of heaven like? The kingdom of heaven is persistent. The landowner keeps going back. He went early in the morning and at nine and at noon and at three and at five. The landowner was persistent. Much like God is persistent in our lives continually pursuing a relationship with us, even when we turn away. God pursues us and is persistent. The kingdom of heaven is open to everyone. Regardless of when those workers began, they received payment for their work. The landowner didn't say, well, you only worked for an hour. That's all I'm paying you for. The kingdom of heaven is free of punishment. Even though some did not start working first thing in the morning, they were not punished for beginning later. Indeed, that landowner says, why are you still standing here idle at five o'clock in the afternoon? The answer is obviously they still needed work. They had families to feed. And their answer is, we simply haven't been hired. There was not punishment for having not been hired. And the kingdom of heaven is what we are working towards here on earth. At least it is what Jesus says we should be working towards. At times we definitely want to work towards that kingdom when it is beneficial for us. And not as much when it's not. God's grace and mercy is abundant in both of these stories. In Jonah, God offers it to both the people of Nineveh and to Jonah. There is plenty to go around. In Matthew, God's grace and mercy are offered to the people people who arrived first and the people who arrived last, not just to those who arrived first thing in the morning. And God's abundant grace and mercy is available not just to Jonah and to Matthew, but to you and to me. I was reminded the other day that none of us are functioning at our best right now. Not me, not you. We have been in this pandemic nearly seven months, 27 weeks, 189 days, 4,536 hours and way more minutes than I want to calculate. Yet Jesus asks us to work to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. 
not to work alone, but to work with God. So what does that kingdom of heaven look like? It looks like persistence. It looks like continuing to empower those who do not have power. It looks like advocating for the oppressed without feeling like if they have more, then I will have less. It looks like continuing to practice our faith, even though all of us, me included, are tired of worshiping virtually. We continue to show up and we continue to practice our faith. The kingdom of heaven looks like being open to everyone. It means proudly telling people that we are open and affirming, not only if they just ask. It is saying, this is who we are as our brand of Christianity. A brand of Christianity that still follows the teachings of Jesus, but that is open to everyone. It looks like a place free of punishment. It means when I am not at my best, you defer first to grace. And it means when you are not at your best, I offer you mercy. It means we live our faith in all places in our life. And the kingdom of heaven looks like a place that is becoming. We know we will not fully achieve it on this side of life, but it does not mean we stop trying. And while we may not achieve it, we do not work towards it alone. God is with us in this work. It means we are willing to offer grace and mercy, yes, but also that we are willing to accept it. When I am not at my best, I am oftentimes more than willing to offer the grace and mercy but I fail to receive it from God. And when we don't receive it, we must recognize it and remind ourselves that we too are becoming. So the kingdom of heaven is like the landowner who persistently kept going back to the marketplace to find people who might need work for that day. The kingdom of heaven is like the landowner who was open to anyone who wanted to work, regardless of the color of their skin, their ethnicity, how they were dressed, or when they showed up. The kingdom of heaven is like the landowner who did not punish those who began work later, but kept his promise that he would pay them a day's wage. We can work towards that kingdom of heaven, knowing that we will fall short at times that we will be just like the monkey sometimes and want to throw back because something doesn't seem fair. But let us vow that when we do fall short, we will strive to be less like Jonah or the workers in the field and more like the landowner. Trusting that we worship a God who is slow to anger 
and offers us grace and mercy. For it is through the behavior of the landowner that we can more closely achieve the kingdom of heaven on this side of life. May it be so. Amen. I invite you to join in singing hymn number 573, Lead on Eternal Sovereign. come to the time in the service in which we come to God. We come to God knowing we may not be at our best, but knowing that God accepts us even when we are not at our best. And so we come just as we are, perhaps not at our best, as we wish we were perhaps a bit better, and as we wish we were not not our best, knowing that God loves us too much to leave us exactly where we are. And so let us begin with a time of silent prayer. God, whose love is abounding and steadfast, you are indeed greatly to be praised. Although we fail in our ability to love all of your creation, we give thanks for your grace and your mercy. We ask that you might strengthen us so that we might continue to work for the kingdom of heaven. And while we trust that you will strengthen us, there is so much in our world that does not resemble the kingdom of heaven, and so we come to you in prayer. We pray for your creation that is burning in the western United States and all that are in the path of the wildfires. May your kingdom come. We pray for all those impacted by Hurricane Sally. May your kingdom come. We pray for the family of Ruth Bader Ginsburg upon her death. May your kingdom come. We pray for our country that continues to be divided. 
May your kingdom come. We pray for all those impacted by COVID-19, including those who are growing weary of the isolation. May your kingdom come. We pray for those living with mental illness and those that love them. May your kingdom come. We pray for all who are grieving that they might know comfort. May your kingdom come. We pray for the beauty of our fall days, including our crisp mornings. May your kingdom come. We pray for those we now name out loud. Cal. Diane. Larry's family. The Woodard family. Karen. Melissa. All the victims of natural and human violence. Brad. This congregation. Yeah. The children. All the powerless. All, All the prisoners. Zach family, for anybody that needs prayer, for all the COVID people, for all the people that died, and for all the families that are grieving. <clears throat> Loving God, we long for the day when we can see your kingdom come. But until that day, we will continue to strive with you to bring your kingdom to this world. We pray all of these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your kingdom come, done, on earth as it is in heaven. This day, our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our debt. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For your thine kingdom, is the kingdom, the power, the power the glory and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our closing hymn, Oh for a World. love God so much that you love nothing else too much and may you fear God just enough that you need fear nothing else at all. Go in peace.